Hi, we are back with our last presentation uh, by Shrikant, Ajay and Pavan Kumar. And they would be talking about attribute-based models to scale and bring in agility in continuous executions. Please, over to you guys. Uh, thank you all. And uh, first of all, uh, I would like to uh, thank STC, uh, especially uh, for uh, giving us this forum. And also to all the panelists uh, to giving us, uh, for giving us the opportunity uh, to present this particular topic. So initially, right, like uh, when uh, we got the news that our topic got selected as one of the finale presentations, so we wanted to make it more special, uh, especially with the bang on quotes. Uh, and also, as this was our first presentation in an external forum and that too uh, presti prestigious forum like this. So, and in fact, like we have searched for so many quotes and so many anecdotes on the quality. And that's where uh, we have realized the topic itself, like uh, uh, especially uh, that we have come up with, uh, which is completely born out of our struggles uh, to support continuous delivery. It is more about the innovative approach, uh, especially how we have transformed our team to bring in more efficiency in our continuous testing process. So today myself, uh, Shrikan Challa, uh, along with my other uh, colleagues, uh, Ajay and uh, Pavan from Citrix, we are going to talk about uh, attribute-based QA models. So to give a gist uh, about the nature of our work, ours is a globalization services team in Citrix. And uh, as a services team in a product-based organization, uh, we cater to the product uh, globalization needs, especially making uh, our products global ready. So which includes even uh, supporting uh, uh, the products in various languages. So overall, right, like uh, ours is a single team working with multiple product teams. Uh, that means a team of 16 folks uh, uh, supporting almost 30 plus product components, which usually follow a different release cycles, which spans from two week release cycles to three week and uh, even the quarterly ones. So especially the client facing and the cloud uh, components uh, follow more uh, agile releases over server specific components. So let me quickly walk you through some of the key problems that we have faced in our current execution model. So majorly I refer it to as a traditional model here. So in the current uh, agile era, so the entire uh, development, the feature development is done in much more agile way and uh, which uh, in fact even uh, the fixing of issues or even the customer issue uh, are also fixed in much more agile fashion so any fix that goes in or any check-in that goes in requires a rigorous amount of uh, test efforts uh, especially uh, some of the checks uh, like uh, pre-build and post-build tests which usually consume a lot of time which involves a series of uat user acceptance tests, usability tests, stress, performance, and regression suits, making them not suitable for continuous delivery pipelines. So moreover, right? So especially like whenever we build these regression suits may not be feasible enough uh, uh, supporting the agile cycle that needs more time, depending on the complexity of the suits. Overall, ROI of these suits diminishes as the feature enhancements are completely market and customer driven, like especially in Citrix, right? Like uh, uh, the entire uh, 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 the flow changes as in when you get to hear certain or see certain data account issue from the customer. So, and uh, coming to the last part, the, uh, the final challenge, uh, not the final challenge, the almost uh, last challenge in this slide, so as a globalization team, we support uh, products up to 10 uh, plus languages on which these features need to be validated. So this would uh, tremendously increases a lot of combinations that need to be covered to an exponential number. For example, if a, a feature need to be supported across all six different platforms we have, then the total effort uh, it consumes is almost the 60 times uh, of effort that is uh, usually spent and when we compare ourselves with the product teams. So in order to give a proper test coverage, a huge set of uh, combinations uh, uh, rec that, that requires a huge um, uh, amount of effort, which incurs the higher cost. And also, right, like when, when I say higher cost, so we can, it, it, it makes us completely impossible 
for us to function in, in a leaner manner. So going on to the next slide. So uh, that's where uh, we cannot, uh, the higher cost, the more number of combinations, we would need more capacity, which completely makes us impossible to do it in a, uh, or to work in a leaner fashion. So given the product lines of Citrix, uh, especially, uh, we majorly cater to virtualization, cloud and networking domains, and uh, which has uh, full-fledged client-facing components, cloud and server components. So when I say client-facing components and cloud and server-specific components, these are completely uh, uh, clubbed or completely tied up with the uh, OS, the server OS or even the desktop OS that we support. And these days, right, even these OS are being released in much more agile manner. So every quarter we are seeing a newer version of OS being released by the Microsoft. And they, uh, even these new enhancements on the OS also incurs a lot of maintenance cost uh, on our uh, automation in order to make it make the entire scripts compatible with the newer version so that like we can continuously run our suits. So that way, right, like with the limited capacity, this may not be possible to uh, especially manage the higher maintenance cost on automation side. And coming to the last one, uh, the efficiency of identifying the issues. So especially the lacking in the ability to identify the issues uh, uh, via automation is another challenge, which leads to identify these issues almost at the fag end of the delivery uh, pipeline. So in order to overcome these challenges, uh, we team, our team has worked together to come up with uh, 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 the attribute based model. So I'll uh, quickly hand it over to my colleague, Ajay, who will be walking us through this solution. Over to you, Ajay. Thank you, Shrikant. So looking at uh, all the problems described as of now, we could uh, you know summarize the enormous uh, amount of uh, language coverage the uh, various international keyboards and say multiple versions of operating systems uh, you know to validate is causing such a huge stress and load on the existing qa capacity uh, to be able to certify every new feature and hence uh, you know with our data driven approach uh, we were able to root cause the bugs and we arrived uh, at certain clusters and these clusters actually of these bugs led us to uh, you know these attributes so let's take uh, a look at what are attributes so here we define attributes as uh, a set of characteristics of a software component so uh, let's take an example uh, of any application so some of the attributes uh, could be uh, arrived based on the type of user interaction with that software, uh, such as say um, new features UI, or uh, you know we could talk about a client keyboard from uh, various endpoint devices. Uh, we could say some of the attributes or characteristics like uh, various international users, uh, you know they accessing uh, uh, the feature in in various language of their choice, or even those users uh, you know uh, having to input. A range of characters from say English to German to Japanese and so on and so forth and the users you know accessing the applications from various time zones and date and time formats so so these are some of the uh, attributes and now that we have gained some understanding of what are types of attributes let's move to the solution so here in the attribute based model you know when we compare with the traditional approach right so uh, we could conduct the qa and automation uh, in the traditional approach uh, really based on um, something like a new feature a test case you know we would build a suit and that would uh, really uh, you know need to be covered uh, holistically in the traditional approach however in the traditional based model we classify these uh, new feature into corresponding attributes like some of the attributes that we just now saw so some attributes uh, could be of high risk area say um, some example like keyboard input where user is unable to even type or even interact uh, really with uh, the application 
and some of the attributes could be of low risk area. So with the attribute based models, uh, the way we approach QA and automation uh, for new feature is via its attributes and not as a new feature and the full uh, suit of things that needs to be done. So given an attribute, we devise set of ready to use scenarios which really address that specific attribute. And the same attribute can really lie in uh, uh, multiple features and components. And hence the entire QA and automation planning will become more predictable, like based on uh, what are the impacted attributes. And uh, thus it can help us to scale exponentially, wherein you know we can meet the challenging release needs. And also it can help to really execute various attribute based automation suites in, uh, in, in a completely parallel fashion at the same time. And once these attributes which are identified and are automated and it, it can be executed really across multiple platforms uh, with uh, various generic solutions that we will get to see some of them uh, in the future uh, in the coming slides. So, so now moving on to the way these attributes will really help us uh, to address in uh, CI/CD pipeline. So, uh, let's go back to our uh, data-driven approach, where uh, you know we were able to arrive at certain attributes from certain clusters of bugs, right? So, we noticed that these attribute-based models can really help to position our automation and tooling strategy as well uh, within the pipeline, wherein some of the attributes can be identified um, really early in the cycle, like say using uh, static code analysis, for example. Um, some of the attributes can be uncovered there. And some of the attributes uh, can be really um, immediately um, uh, uncovered the moment a build is generated. And also some of the attributes are like, you know, when the complete end-to-end -end integration environment is prepared and those attributes can be covered and found there. So this really, you know, this approach of attribute based, uh, you know, helps us to position uh, us to derive like multiple innovative tools, uh, which really helps us to target these key attributes of a software. And I think you will all be interested to see some of these. So over to uh, uh, my colleague Pavan, uh, where we will get to take a you know, deep down look on uh, some of these tools and how we could uh, really attack those attributes. Over to you, Pavan. Thank you, Ajay. <clears throat> so now let's take a couple of attributes which Ajay was talking about and see the challenges we faced and the solutions we have come up for these attributes. Now let's take UI attribute uh, in the beginning. Here we have a simple login page for our Citrix Cloud product. We have a couple of uh, text boxes, a couple of buttons, and a few hyperlinks. So we need to validate all these uh, are working fine. And when we extend these to localized languages, the challenges are multifold. Uh, for example, if you can see this forgot username string in English is small compared to the German string, which is very big. And due to this, a lot of times the strings get overlapped. Maybe it gets overlapped with the earlier string or the end portion of the string gets truncated itself. And uh, in some of the cases, it is uh, not able to handle the Unicode characters, thus leading to garbled characters. And even a lot of times we have seen that uh, lack of Unicode supportability breaks the functionality itself, meaning user will not be able to log in at all since the username field is not allowing Unicode characters, etc. So to overcome uh, these problems and to cover each and every scenario, we have come up with the solution. Uh, we have a UI navigator tool, uh, which navigates throughout the UI of a product automatically. Uh, we need not have to write specific test cases. Uh, for example, in the traditional approach, if we take the earlier uh, example of login screen, we'll have to write test steps for it to enter username, enter password, click on login, then click on next button, so on and so forth. So here we are completely avoiding it. The tool automatically detects all the clickable elements and it automatically keeps on navigating. So no coding is needed as such for using this tool. And it is smart enough to identify all the new screens which it encounters while it is navigating. Also, it takes a screenshots of all such screens for us to refer at a later point of time if we want to see the screens. We have intelligence built into the tool 
so that it can identify the issues which we discussed earlier it can identify the truncation issues overlapping issues unicode issues all into uh, the tool itself and since we are not writing any test cases as such so uh, we need not have to worry about our usual problem of updating x paths ids etc since uh, these are fetched dynamically at the uh, runtime and uh, with, by making some minor configuration changes this tool can be used across any of the products and also we are supporting around uh, 10 plus languages with this product so we see with all this with having automatic bug detection automatic crawling no test case creation less maintenance we are reducing the overall qa time which is needed considerably uh, now let's move on to one more attribute the keyboard attribute uh, here are a few sample keyboard layouts that are used across the globe. So to give you an example, the standard English keyboard layout has 101 keys on the keyboard, whereas the Korean has 103, the Japanese has 106 or in some cases 109 keyboard layouts. And that is for Windows. If you consider uh, the same keyboard layouts for Mac, then we have uh, Android and uh, iOS, the mobile based keyboard layouts, which have completely different implementation. And even on 101 keyboard layout, the overall layout varies across uh, different countries. For example, if you see a French keyboard layout, it has Azerty instead of a default QWERTY keyboard. And in German, it has the QWERTY keyboard layout. So you can see the complexity of overall. Uh, keyboard validation which the globalization team have to do and a lot of uh, I mean a lot of times uh, the functionality breaks since the keyboard is not able to map properly uh, to give you an example if uh, the azerty keyboard layout is not mapped properly and qwerty is there then the uh, french user will not be able to type his password correctly so the, which will lead to a lot of inconvenience so to overcome such problems and to ident and to test all these possible combinations we have come up with a unified framework uh, which simulates the keystrokes as if a user is entering those keys and is passed on to the product and uh, this tool can be run across any platform the ones which we discussed earlier maybe it can be windows mac android ios it is completely independent of the platform and can be run easily and this uh, keyboard solution is easily integratable with any of our other attribute based solutions, be it UI or Unicode, etc. And with this, we are able to provide support for around 100 plus unique keyboard layouts, which are currently in use. Now, let's quickly jump on to a quick demo which we have captured. And let's take the earlier example of the login screen itself. Here, uh, we have enabled the UI unicode and keyboard attributes so as soon as it detects that there are uh, text fields here it starts typing the <coughs> characters in german as you can see here <coughs> excuse me it also valid types the unicode characters and checks whether uh, the fields are supporting unicode characters <coughs> once it is uh, validated this it uh, logs into the product i'll just keep and it, it lands in the home page here it will identify all the elements which are clickable for example this will give then authentication then modification service intake one by one it will keep on navigating to all these and identifying all the clickable elements in that and continue with navigation so if you see here it will automatically jump to the authentication site and then identify the clickable elements inside this <coughs> similarly it will continue with other till it has uh, navigated all the elements which it was able to detect now let's see a few of issues which it has detected so the the tool has built in intelligence so it was able to identify issues such as uh, overlapping truncation etc even the it can identify issues uh, where on a japanese page if there are some english strings appear it can also detect that and unicode issues so this is a lot of uh, effort which we used to need to manually validate all these and these screenshots are saved separately so that we can easily uh, check only the issue screens and take appropriate actions now with this attribute based models let's see what benefits we are able to get as you saw the keyboard layout 
testing involves a lot of effort. So we are able to reduce around 70% of the manual effort which was needed in keyboard validation by using the keyboard attribute automation which we have come up. And for all the products which we have targeted, we were able to uh, cover around 90% of the UI coverage and <clears throat> around 85% of the bugs were detected early in cycle and also since each bug will be associated with a particular attribute, the RCA is quite straightforward. And with all these solutions in place, the overall cycle time is reduced by around 50%. So we see that with attribute based model, we are bringing in agility in execution and also the solution is scalable uh, to be used across multiple products and on different platforms. Thank you.